The next task is to build the tower that's going to hold the, the physical telescope itself. So we'll look at that now. The tower is basically going to be a miniature version of what we did for the foundation and the, the platform um, so that it allows the camera to move up and down within the mechanism. So what we've got are a wall either side of a camera cradle and again a, a herringbone gear system sitting inside that which is going to give us control over the, the altitude of the camera. There'll also be some other supporting pieces that we put in just to hold gears in place and add to the stability and the, the rigidity of the, the drive system. Each wall is an identical piece um, so what we have is uh, two halves of the wall trapped inside the wall are three RC bearings and then an assembly which can pivot on those bearings that we attach the cradle to. So these walls then mirror each side to create the structure for the telescope. So each wall consists of two of these part P's and one of these part R's. You can see it has a small herringbone gears sitting inside it and also three of these RC bearings these are going to be with the M5 bore on them and the basic idea is this is going to sit within that hole there and these bearings fit into the groove I'll just show you it on the inside of this so the bearings will sit there there's three to keep it balanced and it's well worth making sure in this assembly that this ring here, this groove, has been quite well sanded. Make sure there's no burrs or anything which could make it um, move roughly. So you want this ultimately to, to move extremely smoothly as it's doing the vertical adjustment of the telescope. And these bearings should fit quite smoothly and quite nicely within that. So what we're going to do is basically one bearing there, one bearing there, and one bearing there. And if I get it right, just jammed it, there we go. You can see that it will, it will hold itself quite nicely within that gap. And then the second part B sits on top and sandwiches that mechanism in place. Then finally, you take an M5 20 mil bolt, push it through, the bearing, may just need screwing through onto the plastic on the other side, same on this, same on this, and then on this side just a small nylon nut just to hold that in place. Before you proceed just make sure that this is moving nice and smoothly inside. It's not catching and there's no ridges or anything like that that's left over. So take your time, take it apart, sand again, and as soon as you feel that that is moving nicely without actually any terrible movement in it, it should be fairly firm in the way that it's, it's fitted in, then you're ready to actually assemble the rest of the, of the, the mount. So that's two copies of the, the wall made with the, the vertical movement gearing put in place and I've just added some extra bolts again 20 mil bolts just to increase the strength of it make sure everything stays together nicely so two across the top and then two lower down here um, you'll notice these are slightly mirror images there's no there's no nut on these two yet because we're going to attach something else there later on doesn't matter too much if you do add a nut by accident we can always remove it later so the next thing to do is to attach the two pieces together. So you need to print the camera cradle off, which is part W. Doesn't matter which way up it goes, it's, it's symmetrical at this point. And the camera cradle, if you just put two bolts through it, it should align with the two holes in there. And then just secure nuts on the other side, here and here and match up with the same on this side. So it should push through if I align them properly. There we go. And another two nuts on the inside here. 
So with both sides attached, so with the camera cradle in the middle attached to the two um, gear heads and then those embedded within the walls and all joined together, you essentially get the top of the telescope assembly and you can see that it moves and again just check that it, it moves. Um, it wants to be reasonably tight but, but not so tight that the motors are going to struggle to overcome it. So the next job is then to attach this onto the platform of the telescope. Here's the platform. Um, at this point we can say which is the front and the back of the telescope. So where the drive wheel is coming through the platform base that's the back of the telescope. Then we've got the left, the right and the front of the telescope. So putting this body on top of this now, it's going to connect, uh, it's going to sit across these two beams which are standing out of these brackets and they fit into the groove that you can see here and here. So they should slot across. Probably be quite tight but they, they should fit, they should all be the right size. There we go, and it will just slide down and slide home like that. To secure the two walls in place um, against the brackets, this piece uh, labelled Y um, is going to sit um, across the base of the, the two walls and these screws on each side will go through the bracket on the platform and secure the whole thing together so that the, the walls can, can't come off anymore. This piece will fit parallel with this row of holes here and the bolts will go through the hole here and here on each side. The hole in the middle will align with the central hole that the cables can pass through later on in the build. So again this may be a snug fit. Um, this fits this way around with these holes at the front of the telescope and the slight groove sitting at the back of the telescope where the drive wheel is. So we place it in like that and then secure it with the bolts going through the side holes. They will tighten again just with, a, with an Allen key in my case. So just tighten the last two up. Now with that piece secured in place, this should be quite stable now. This should be quite firm. So a tuning hint here is just test this. If this starts to feel too stiff, it may be worth just releasing slightly the pressure on these screws and that will um, just relax the pressure on the bearings. Just let it move a bit more easily. And conversely, if this is too loose, tighten these up and it should increase the, the friction a little and you'll get a, a more steady movement on the, the carrier for the camera. I've just corrected a small mistake I made there. You may remember that um, two of these bolts in the walls didn't have the nuts on them. Those two bolts should be at the back. If you've made the mistake the same as me, just move the nuts from the front to the back, or the back to the front as, as you need to do. The next step is to mount the worm drive wheel, uh, which we were looking at when we created the, the azimuth drive wheel earlier on at the beginning of the build. That's going to sit on top of this 6mm shaft in my case, and there's a small grub screw sits inside, which will be used to secure this wheel against the flat side of the shaft that we ground out when we, when we cut the metal. A handy tip that I've used in a lot of places uh, in some of these builds is I've bought some of these collars which again are six millimeters inside and a little grub screw to secure them against the shaft and I found these are very useful to use in various places you can slide around on the, the drive and in this case I could use it to prevent the shaft sliding up and down by securing that collar against say this bearing at the bottom or maybe against the holder at the top. So use those as and when you feel necessary just to make sure that the, 
the drive stays correctly aligned as you assemble it. So I'm going to put one of these collars all the way down on the base of the, the drive shaft, just flush against the RC bearing that's sitting in the platform base and just tighten it up gently using the Allen key and that can just stop the wheel moving too much up and down. Then with a similar idea slide the worm drive gear onto the shaft aligning the grub screw against the flat part of the shaft because we're going to tighten that with one of the Allen keys as well. The position isn't too critical at the moment, we're going to fine tune that when we assemble the motor, but this is just to make sure it's in place before we construct the rest of the, the assembly. Then I place another collar above the drive wheel. That can just sit un unconnected at the moment. And finally this L piece, which is a bracket, that is going to sit on top of this and again will act as a home for another one of the RC bearings, which should push tight into the, into the home. And to start with, just relax these two bolts out and use that to roughly locate this on the top of the drive shaft. So I've taken the screws out and then just squeeze that down over the drive shaft and level with the screw holes so that I can re-close re these bolts. And so I'll just show you slightly closer here what's happening. So the drive shaft is coming up, it has the, the worm gear attached to it, it has a a loose collar sitting on it, a bearing sitting above that, sitting in this bracing arm and I'm aligning the bottom hole of the bracing arm with the bolt here on the side of it. You don't need to over tighten this at this point because this is designed to adjust as we connect the rest of the motor mechanism and the rest of the gear assembly. Uh, we may need to fine tune slightly the position of this shaft just to make sure that the whole telescope rotates smoothly and we don't get any, any awkward points in the motion. Then finally, another one of the collars just on top. And again, just for now, loosely close the grub screw up and that's just to stop the bearing coming off the top through use. So if I hold it up, you should be able to see a little bit better roughly what this is starting to look like. So the drive shaft is coming up with the worm drive gear on it and the two collars at the top, at the bottom, and then a third one in the middle that I've not kind of committed yet, but um, is going to go up against here just to, again, just to restrict any movement in all the components when I'm happy with the position of everything. With those just loosely in place, you can test it and you should see that the telescope moves quite smoothly. If it isn't moving smoothly at this point, just start to move backwards through the steps and make sure that everything is aligned to your satisfaction. We don't want any friction at this point because we're going to make it too difficult for the motors and you're going to start to, to get mispositioning of the telescope if it's not moving very well. So that's the basic structure complete and what we've got to do now is build the motors and the rest of the gear assembly to drive the azimuth move movement which is left right and also to drive the altitude movement lifting up, up and down. So we'll put this to one side and work on that next.